Hi, I'm Ashley Swartz, CEO of Furious Minds. Thanks for tuning in to my segment. So is 2014 the year of smart TVs and connected television? Uh, given that my company and I and a bunch of my dear, dearly loved and respected friends in the industry are doubling down on connected television, I'm sort of hopeful and optimistic. So I think it's going to be a great year for all of us. I just read a strategy analytics forecast um, which said that in 2013, television smart TV shipments were up 55% year over year to about 76 million total globally. Um, and they estimate that about 44% of global flat panel display shipments in 2014 will be smart or connectable. And in 2017, we're looking at that, about three quarters of total shipments are gonna be uh, smarter connected TVs, which says a lot, right? And what we're seeing is that sort of year over year, the percentage of, inc uh, of those that are actually connecting those television sets to the internet is getting bigger, right? So we were at 33, 38%. The estimate last year was that it was about 50% is the connect rate, even higher in Western Europe. And this is really important, right? Because if we look, go back, and I've made this analogy before, and we look at the console wars for PS3 and Xbox 360, we saw that once manufacturers started to understand the unboxing, so you take a TV out of its box, you hang it on the wall, you turn it on, it says, do you want to connect to this Wi-Fi network or connect to the internet? And it's made easy. We're going to see much higher connect rates. It's interesting though, right? Because things are changing. We're seeing that legacy players in television are actually starting to get a little bit scared by the number of connected televisions and obviously smart TV shipments and sales are driving that. So we recently just saw that uh, in sort of Jan you know, in January, Charters Communications, $38 billion bid for Time Warner. Interesting and notable, it's sort of been a conversation that has been brewing for a while, right? But now they're saying they're going to go to direct to Time Warner's board. And one of the quotes from their, uh, their CEO was that uh, they cited an attempt to future-proof uh, by getting their foot in the door uh, in millions of homes for the internet, right? So they're saying that the hedge for whatever's happening in television and the change there is by making sure that they are at least sort of in the last mile taking broadband services to homes. So this is interesting, right? So the question is, are these guys making a departure, departure from legacy cable television services and doubling down on broadband? Yes. But also, what's interesting is the more homes and larger footprint they have, the more leverage they have in carriage negotiations as well, because they have more households, so the prices they can negotiate with the major broadcasters for their carriage fees, they obviously have a little bit more sort of power at that table, right? So it's a double fold as you see um, more consolidation in the operator space. These guys are going to change the economics of legacy television. And when you see that all major broadcasters, with the exception of CBS, are still making the plurality of their re revenue from carriage fees, it is a change of times. Net neutrality also plays into this, right? So now that sort of, you know, the courts have said that operators that provide broadband services can charge fees and can prioritize and throttle traffic up and down for certain services, the fact that the great successes of Netflix and Hulu and services like that that are thought to be a threat to cable subscription fees or cable subscription revenue of MVPDs actually may end up being opportunistic because they can turn around now and charge premiums to ensure that the streaming services for all these players are optimized, right? So this is a great hedge. Consolidation only changes the power dynamics, but puts these guys that are actually delivering the last mile uh, to the household in a position of maintaining leverage. Benjamin Arnold, who's an MPD analyst, um, came out of CES this year and said that he's hearing more and more that consumers are saying they, in fact, in fact are interested in connected televisions. When the last couple of years people were saying, no, no, no apps on TV, it's interesting how we may actually be coming full circle. Streaming services like Roku, Aereo, TV All Everywhere Authenticated Services, even guys like Time Time Warner, for example, and Netflix, they're now preloaded apps that are sitting on the smart television, right? And I think it's an interesting juxtaposition when we talked about these streaming services cannibalizing television and putting television to threat because you can watch them on any device at any time. And the fact actually now that smart TV app environments are finding their relevance and usage because of the traditional television content that is accessible and contained on them, right? We start having more and more experiences that drive from traditional linear television and first live run viewing for discovery to drive time shifted viewing into a smart connectable environment. And those two worlds meet and they're easy because of things like video ACR, it'll be a brand new day. I think a lot of us don't know exactly how it's gonna play out, but it's exciting all the same. It's interesting that, you know, apps are, I think, becoming relevant. And I can't say that I've always been bullish about that, but I do, I am actually starting to see where, you know, there was a point in time in the industry, we said for a long time that no one wants another set-top box, right? So like Roku, for example, announced at CES that they're actually, they're becoming shifting from a hardware manufacturer, set-top box manufacturer, into a service provider, as we're seeing with a lot of the cable guys, because if they actually ha don't have to deliver a truck roll, or they don't have to actually take a set-top box into a house and lease that, that reduces their overhead costs and cost of service if they can just deliver it through an authentic 
self-authenticated app, right? So now I remember this, we went to this brief period of time where I think at the last like 24 months, everybody had a, set, a different set top box. We were buying Rokus, we were buying boxies, we had our gaming consoles, et cetera. I think we're now shifting back into the place where less set top boxes is better. One of the things that I keep thinking about that's really interesting is that I'm ta- we're looking at this ecosystem of consumer electronics and specifically the hardware in the living room, right? And the economics are shifting from hardware and what is driven by a bill of materials cost to define what your operating margin is into a services business, right? And I think that's incredibly interesting when you look at app ecosystems and software and things like that. Um, and what does that mean for consumer electronics overall as a business? Is it being re-envisioned? Is it being re-engineered? What happens to the value chain? Because historically, we've talked about CE manufacturers not being very good at software, but Samsung, LG, Vizio, these guys are getting much better at things like software updates and refresh because we've seen, for example, the Achilles heel that that was for Sony for the PS3 platform in the past. Hopefully they're learning. I think what's really interesting to note also is still the disparity of economics when we talk about hardware versus services. In the U.S., television shipments alone made up $15.5 billion in gross top line revenue for manufacturers. The advertising industry last year was $70 billion still a big delta, right? It's more than a four times delta. So at the end of the day, getting into the services business, if inadvertently that means getting into the ad business, is incredibly opportunistic for the smart TV guys um, and all the sort of ecosystem that surrounds TV 2.0. I'm excited to be considered a player in that, and I'm very looking, much so looking forward to what 2014 holds. Thanks.